first of all, to the angel of this house, to the pastor. Man, you just don't know. Y'all have a good pastor. It's hard to find pastors like this nowadays. Y'all got a good pastor. Pastor that love, that country love, just love on them. I got a country wife, she's from Natchez, Mississippi. Amen. She says the city, but it's like that small, I call it the country. But she know how to love on you and she know how to feed you. Yes. You got a girl. Amen. They love on me in one row and fed me. All I can do is just say, where my bed at? <laughs> I, I thank you, my brother, for receiving us, my family and I, your wife and I. And I, I thank you, you brother, for having us. I'm, I'm at home. I, I know. <laughs> I know Union Bethel is an extension of St. James, and St. James is an extension of Union Bethel. I'm at home, away from home, amen. And I, I, I thank God for being here. I thank God for the energy and the excitement. When I heard that this that, that Reverend Sanders would be coming here, I shouted and got excited for the great things that God will be doing not only in Union Bethel but in this community. And I had something. Greetings to my lovely wife, Lord have mercy, and to my children, who I have to get on their case from time to time, but they are right. They are right. And to you, 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 brother, it's good to be embraced, it's good to be loved, it's good to be considered family. Amen? Amen. Amen. Especially when you go through some of the things in life that life it has a way of taking you through. Hey Amen. It's just good to know people is there yes. to support you and care for you and love on you and say, hey, it is not over. The best is still to come. Hey Amen. I thank God for this opportunity where Ms. Sanders has given unto me to break the bread of life with you to share this platform. Hey Amen. The pain folks joke all the time about this time. Amen. And we, we jab every now and then. Amen. But we love on each other. Amen. And so that's what I'm most grateful for. Hallelujah. The scripture will be coming from Philippians chapter 2. Starting at the first verse, uh, 1 through 5. But we want to make for this evening our focal point, our focal verse on verse 5. Amen. Philippians chapter 2. 1 through 5, and it reads, If there be therefore any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels of mercy, fulfill ye my joy, that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of, being of one accord, of one mind. Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in loneliness of mind, let each esteem others better than yourself. Look not every man on his own things, but every man or woman also on the things of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Let us pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, use everything about me to brightly divide the word of truth amongst your people. Break your bread of life, God, that they not only may not receive it, but just receive it in here, but take it out there in the communities, on their jobs, in their homes, and apply it to their everyday Christian living. And let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable, O oh God, in my sight, for you alone. Or my Redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. It's good. It's good. It's good to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Amen. amen. As I come to you, amen, on the second Sunday after Easter or in your liturgical calendars, the third Sunday of Easter, it's just good to be in the house of the Lord. If y'all don't know about my I love music, I can't sing a little. But I love music that resonates down 
eight years old, amen. So y'all can keep saying, amen. Pastor uh, surprised me this morning. I had another preacher gave me. He showed up, amen. I was excited to see him. He rendered this amount of him. And Lord, thank the Lord, he came on time. <laughs> amen, amen. But well, let's go to work. In 1972, the United Negro College Fund, UNCF, teamed up with the USA Council to launch a campaign that would encourage and raise the awareness of Americans to support the mission of helping African American students get the placement and the funding they need for higher education and beyond. The iconic slogan, a mind is a terrible thing to waste, was adopted to help prepare the success of the said campaign. For more than three decades, the slogan has been unchanged and has become part of the American vernacular. Yet, originating from a Malcolm X direct quote, our mind is still a terrible thing to waste, the mind is said to be a set cognitive of faculties that enable consciousness, thinking, judgment, memory, and perception. The concept of the mind is understood in many different ways by many different cultures and by many different religious traditional beliefs. This mind thing can be so breathtaking at times and so misunderstood all at the same time. You and your brother, I come by this morning just to talk to you from a simple Simple title entitled uh, This Mind. Look at your neighbor and say, This Mind. This Mind. This Mind. This mind. Amen. Paul writes in the letter to the Philippians, It's by far the most joyful epistles of all the Pauline writers. In the short letter, the apostle mentions some form of rejoicing or joy at least 16 times. Nevertheless, the apostle joy, however, comes in the midst of opposition as he pins the letter under the threat of execution from a Roman prison. Yet, in light of his affliction, Paul calls his beloved partners into ministry to rejoice in the gospel and to stand united day that in fellowship in the Christ-like footsteps that he's laid before them. I believe you, my brothers and my sisters, the joy that explodes throughout the context of the letter of the Philippians is rooted in the core fundamental understanding that it takes a certain kind of mindset to endure to the end. I don't know about you, but your soul has to be angry when you go Christian movements. 
Hallelujah. This mind, one must be willing to humble themselves and put the interests of others before their own personal gain. This mindset is a direct opposition of what is said to be the American dream, which is undergirded of the self gain and self interest. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. What mind? The mind to put others before yourself. This mind, having the same love. Christ tells us that one of the great, one of the two great commandments is to love your neighbor as yourself. Will be a better place. Paul and 